So we wanted to study um, the resonation of different cellos. Okay, so we wanted to determine how the absence of a resonating body of a cello would affect resonance of the notes and their overtones. And we also wanted to see how different mutes would affect the resonance. Um, so we hypothesized that with the resonating body there would be more resonance and with the mutes there would be less resonance. Um, so first just a little bit about the different parts of the cello. Um, we have the tuning pegs here which are the strings. We have four different strings, A, D, G, and C. Um, and then this part is the resonating body. Um, and we have the bridge here and then the fine tuners and tailpiece. Then we tested a practice cello, which is used for traveling, and it's portable and quiet, and it's good for practice, and it doesn't have a resonating body. So it comes in pieces. Um, and then we have a couple different kind of mutes. Um, this is a practice mute. It's made of metal, um, and it's a lot heavier. Uh, they go on the bridge, and then it damps the sound. Um, and then the one on the left is a performance mute, and it's made of rubber that also goes on the bridge. And it kind of changes the, um, the overall sound of the note, and people use it for musical effects, so composers can write it into different pieces. So when you play, vibrations from the string move to the bridge, and then the body of the instrument, and then the air inside the instrument, and then the sound goes out the f holes. But for a practice cello, since it doesn't have a resonating body, it's just the strings and the bridge that vibrate. So um, I played a three-octave C major scale, uh, which starts with the lowest note on the instrument. And Bretland held a microphone a couple of centimeters away from the front of the instrument, and we recorded uh, the sound in Audacity. So what you see here is um, the sound waves for um, a single note on each of the four instruments. Uh, at the top is the practice cello, then the practice mute, and then the mute and then the cello. Um, so these sound waves are all of the different resonating frequencies um, all added together into one sound wave and that's what creates the kind of weird shapes where you don't just see like one sound wave. So in Audacity there's a Fourier transform which it like separates the different sound waves and then graphs the amplitude. So then we get a graph of the sound level over the um, frequency. Uh, these these sound levels say that they're not in the human hearing range because the human hearing range starts at zero decibels, but there was just an offset with the microphone, so all of our um, relationships were still valid with this information. Um, so here we have uh, six different notes, and the first peak is <coughs> the fundamental note that was being played, and then the next peaks are the overtones that resonate. And so the, hot, the lower notes have more peaks, so they have more overtones that were resonating than the higher notes. Um, so that was for the cello. This one's for the cello with the performance mute. Um, so the first couple peaks, the fundamental frequency, actually seem to increase in sound level, whereas the overtones seem to decrease. Um, so that was interesting. The practice mute, um, the, the sound level of the <coughs> peaks seem to decrease, and these decrease at a more consistent level than with the uh, performance mute. The performance mute seem to have kind of an angle decrease as it increases in frequency. And then I'm sorry, I don't, I'm not really familiar with music, but I'm, I'm looking at these frequencies. Is it true that the first peak I see from the left is the frequency of the note that you're yes, playing? Yes, okay. That's okay. Just the sound level is changing, not yeah. the resonating notes. And again, overall, the sound levels decrease for all these notes. Um, so what we interpret from this data is that the resonating frequencies are not coming from the instrument body, um, but they're actually coming from the strings. It's not coming from the instrument body or from the bridge, because we still have the same um, frequencies that are present. They're present in different amounts, but the same frequencies are still present in each of these scenarios. Um, but we do see in the practice cello and the cello with the practice mute and then the regular cello that the fundamental frequencies and overtones seem to be present in kind of an equal amount, but with the practice mute the overtones were less present than the fundamental frequency, which explains why it's used for musical effects and how it changes the overall sound of the note and not just the sound level. 
So the next thing that we did was compare the sound intensity of the practice cello, the um, practice mute, and the mute to the sound intensity of the cello. So we subtracted those sound intensities from the sound intensity of the cello, and then we graphed it. So any of the positive values that you're going to see are going to be um, where a frequency is damped, and any of the negative uh, values are going to be where a frequency was amplified. So these were all the frequencies that occurred for um, one note. This was the lowest note on the cello, C2. Um, uh, the blue is the practice cello, and the purple is the practice mute, and the orange is the performance mute. Okay, so the practice cello, which doesn't have the resonating body, has the most notes that were like damped, and then the performance mute had some that some notes that were amplified, which can explain how it affects the note and the like sound of it, and then. Practice mute was also. And then the black line that we have there, that's the fundamental frequency, that's the one that's being played. And then the gray one is um, the second harmonic, so that's an octave higher. Um, and those seem to be some of the most drastically affected notes, uh, depending on whether or not there was a mute or an instrument body. So we did this for um, six different notes, and we see kind of the same pattern that the practice cello uh, damped the sound and that the practice mute and the mute damp some frequencies and uh, amplified others. Um, this is another little interesting fact as we have time to keep going. You have another minute. <laughs> okay, so there's um, there's something on the cello called a wolf tone. Um, it doesn't occur on the practice cello, but um, on the regular cello. Uh, when the, uh, the body of the instrument has its own resonating frequency, and when the note that you're playing gets really, really close to that, the air inside the instrument is vibrating at one frequency, and the body is vibrating at a frequency very close to that, so you get this horrible beating sound. Um, so someone created this wolf tone eliminator that you put on your instrument. Um, you put that part, that thicker part, on the inside, and then um, that volume or that magnet on the inside moves up and down and changes the volume of air to damp the resonation of the instrument body. So we uh, can go to the graph. We played the F tone, it occurs on a single note on the cello, um, and we played that note with and without the wolf tone eliminator, and then we subtracted the sound intensity without the eliminator to the sound intensity with the eliminator. So you can see the positive part where it damped the frequency of the resonating body, and then where it amplified the sound that we wanted to play. What's what I think is really interesting about this is it's shifting frequencies. It's not actually taking the vibration and making it heat, it's causing the vibration to come out as sound, but at a different frequency. Question? Thank you. <laughs> Taking questions, there's a lot there. <laughs> What's a cello? <laughs> <laughs> Can you play something? You play this note that sounds really scary. I can try to find a wolf tone, but I don't know if I can find it. Do you have, like, the, um, the wolf? Yeah, I do. Okay. I actually got it for free. They're like $100. <laughs> <laughs> you should write songs based on your 80 physical experience. Oh, yes. Those would be scary songs. <laughs> 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 okay, so this part, this part is the wolf tone eliminator, and you move it around on the front of the cello. Um, they gave you the like, instructions for a great thing. So you can hear the beating, and I'm going to put this that if you wanted to, you could spend seven years getting a PhD in 
cello resonances. <laughs> we have scratched the surface of something really deeply fascinating. Thank you guys.